Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do either our final or one of the final stratospheric updates of the winter slash early spring. Now of course we've been talking about this over the last few weeks as we've had numerous warming events within the stratosphere during early part of 2024 but to be honest we've not actually seen much fruition at the surface and the troposphere. Yes, we've got easterly winds coming in at the moment, a Scandinavian block, but it's really nothing too notable at the surface with the air masses not particularly cold. But it will be sod's law, the colder weather that we've been expecting with all these stratospheric warmings and with the weak polar vortex arrive during the early to middle parts of spring. Again, not in the next week or so, talking perhaps second half of March into early April. Or even if we don't even see colder weather, the risk of just generally cooler conditions, or wetter conditions, late season frosts, for example. Now, we're going to do an update today because we have seen a major sun stratosphere warming the past week or two. And I do want to explore, are we actually going to see a recovery of the polar vortex? Now, climatologically, the polar vortex gets destroyed and essentially disappears for the summer in around the middle of April, give or take a couple of weeks. Now, generally, when we see a major sun stratospheric warming, it's a sudden warming and then it cools down again and we see a recovery in the polar vortex. Sometimes it doesn't really get back to full strength at all, but we normally see a rebound. However, what we're seeing in the moment is perhaps the stratosphere is basically gone from early March. Some runs, especially the GFS, are suggesting no recovery in the next couple of weeks, maybe even no recovery for the rest of spring until climatologically uh, the polar vortex disappears until about uh, until about early uh, early autumn time, late summer time. So we'll have a look at what the latest runs are showing today. We'll show you some of the discrepancies because in fact the Eastern VF actually does just about take us positive for zonal wind winds for about a week or so, up to maybe one or two meters per second in early April before uh, before disintegrating away again. But of course, we'll explore that as I said in this video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, links in the description. And if you start on the latest GFS operational run, you can see it's very warm over the polar vortex at the moment. Not insanely warm, not at sudden stratospheric warming levels anymore in terms of the actual temperatures because we've seen that warming the polar vortex has been obliterated and you can see that it's actually sat uh, or remnants of the polar vortex are sat over the north atlantic if you look at the 10 hpa winds you can see there is still a polar vortex in existence but the zone of winds have reversed because of the major displacement event and they are incredibly weak now, if you run over the next couple of a uh, couple of weeks now, you can see the warming remains and even see another larger warming appear over the stratosphere. And right towards the end of the run, you can see some faint greens, which is basically, as said, the remnants of the polar vortex. Now, I must stress, end of March is not the end climatologically of the polar vortex, so it can still technically recover, but we would expect to be rapidly weakening anyway. So yes, you can see it is dis disintegrating over the course of the next couple of weeks, but we are definitely seeing, uh, we are definitely seeing uh, that as a result of both the warming, but also of general uh, general times of the year. You can see the 10 HPA winds took the polar vortex. It is nothing, nothing compared to what we see at the moment. And what we see at the moment is nothing compared to what it should be this time of year or what it was a matter of weeks and months ago. So you can see GFS very much aboard on the polar vortex saying minimal and obliterated for the next couple of weeks, perhaps for the rest of the Northern Hemisphere's uh, stratospheric season, really. As I said, sort of end of August, early September through to the middle of April. Now, if you go over to have a look at cross section of this, you can pretty much see this complete. It's almost self explanatory looking at this. On the left hand side, you can see the absolute zonal mean winds and the stratosphere around that 10 HPA level. And on the right, you can see the anomalies. You can see that the zonal mean winds stay pretty much persistently around minus 5 to minus 15 meters per second. So, easterly negative winds as we'd expect westerlies generally during the winter, uh, autumn, winter, and early spring months. 
you can see that it kind of stays the same over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but on the right, you see the anomaly actually weakens. And I said, that is the impact of the climatological weakening. Generally, we see a weakening, so the anomaly is going to move away. But regardless, it is blues pretty much from the higher troposphere all the way through the stratosphere for the next two weeks. So if you are looking, you know, if we were looking for cold weather, if this kind of happened in January, you could say this is the perfect stratospheric charts for potentially cold weather, blocked conditions. But firstly, we're seeing this in early March, so unlikely to bring anything too makes you cold it's too late uh in the winter for anything too crazy and there's no beast from the east on the horizon which is kind of a, a anomalous uh, uh sort of pattern seeing that in march but secondly we're not really seeing any impacts at the surface even if something majorly cold was possible if this was in january we've not seen any impacts of the warmings over the past couple of weeks and months so i don't know if we're going to see any major impacts from this major warming. Now, I said it's Sod's Law that we will see uh, some impacts in the coming weeks, and it'll be typically as soon as we are starting to look forward to something warmer, drier, as we head into the middle of spring, we'll be plunged back in with colder conditions, probably temperatures in the mid single digits, maybe northerly winds, easterly winds, something actually cold. But we will, we will just have to see, of course. Now, if you also have a look at this chart here, which uh, again shows you these only winds, and you can see um, that we've pretty much gone to reversal now over the past couple of days. And these are the last four GFS runs. You can see the blue is the latest run, the orange is yesterday's run, the green is the day before, and then red is the day before that. And you can see the last four runs all been well below zero for the next couple of weeks, just showing you very strong consistency that it's not just an enormous run or it's not just um, just one freak run. As I said, this is uh, consistent. There's a lot of support for this. And you can see some of the runs getting dust below minus 15 meters per second, which is ridiculous negative anomaly. And finally, if we look at the GFS ensembles, you can see the blue line here is what we've seen so far this winter. You can see multiple periods of very weak warmings. In mid-January, we saw a technical sun stress rate warming. Another towards the middle of February. Again, I'm unsure actually if that was a technical sun stress rate warming. I do believe the winds did reverse, but I don't think it was for a 24-hour period or a constant 24-hour period. So it's technically not a major sun stress rate warming. And then, of course, you can see what we're seeing at the moment. The ensembles, as I said, are keeping us below zero for the foreseeable future. There are a couple of runs bringing us above, but I must emphasize, majority keep us below zero. You can see the black line is the climatological mean, what we'd expect this time of year, and you expect to see winds around 20 meters per second right now, and you can see the reversal uh, for the summer is around mid-April. You can see a CFS chart here, which is this lighter blue line actually does have us just going into positive territory during early April. Nothing crazy, but just about bringing us back to positive. So we will have to see. I do want to finally just show you the ECMWF ensembles, which go out to a longer range. And you can see it's very similar to the GFS, well below what we would expect this time of year. I said this thicker red line, 20 meters per second, we are 30 meters per second, even 35 meters per second lower than that. And you can see the red line at the top is some of the highest we could expect. Not seeing anything remotely strong at this stage. You can see, though, as I said, early April, a couple runs bring us around that zero to five meters per second range. Or actually, most do just bring us into positive ter territory. Now, it is only a matter of a few meters per second over zero, so it isn't kind of the margin of error. But interestingly, strong reversals over the next week to two weeks, and then maybe a slight recovery into early April for a week or two before inevitably it will go below zero once again. As said, normally I'd be saying high chance of blocking, high chance of colder than average conditions persisting through early to mid spring. But I don't want to be too bullish because simply we've not seen the results of this so far this winter. It's almost been like there has been a, a major disconnect between what's going on in the stratosphere and what's been going on at the surface. I said, yes, we've got an easterly flow at the moment. Yes, it's turning a little bit chilly, uh, blocked, 
but really it's nothing to shout home about um and i said i don't know if we will see anything to shout home about in the next couple of weeks it could be one of the most eventful but non-eventful <laughs> winters in terms of the stratosphere so much has been going on in the stratosphere so many warmings almost well, definitely two technical sun stratospheric warmings major sun stratospheric warmings maybe just about a third again i'm uncertain exactly what the classification is but three big warmings regardless and we've seen little to no uh impacts at the surface so it is going to be very much one to watch and it actually might depending on what we see in the next few weeks it might really change what we look at as we head into next winter and the subsequent winters because one of the big things we do base our winter uh, predictions off or winter look aheads is what is going on in the stratosphere and i'm not the only one in that boat many other forecasts even professional forecasts like the met office take into account these stratospheres of course what we've seen from the sun stratospheric warmings in the past the beach knees things like that so there definitely is a connect but perhaps it's not as strong as we have initially uh, or uh, as we have anticipated at the moment of course i think i've stated this before but sun stratospheric warmings have only been really observed in the last sort of 50 to 75 years um so we haven't actually got that much data when it comes to that so perhaps this winter could be one of those this sudden stress for uh, this these sudden stress for warmings we've seen this winter of the stratosphere could be one of those where it kind of sets a new benchmark for the sort of connections we see and it may be one of those next winter may see another sudden stress for warming i do think at the back of this winter there won't be much hype at all because we've seen over the past few months that you can still see these major warmings and they can really deliver absolutely nothing of course we'll have a look we'll have to see what happens in the next couple of weeks i said Sol's law will produce something a lot colder during march and early april i said i'll keep you updated with what's going on we may have another sudden stratospheric warming update or another update generally on the stratosphere in the next couple of weeks uh depending on what happens um but again i'll leave that uh for uh for the next couple of weeks to decide uh but if not then i'll see you again for more stratosphere updates probably starting in august or september as we do lead into next winter with the stars of winter look ahead once again but of course we've got summer before that to look ahead, uh, look forward to so we won't get into winter talk too much as we are starting to exit out of it of course though i'll keep you updated in the next couple of weeks in the daily videos looking at of course the surface conditions as i said there is a chance we see something cold i would normally be a lot more bullish with it but I won't be today because of what's happened so far. I said I'll keep you updated with what's going on. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.